to the right way. Oh yes, turn it to the right. And in we go. Right, today we are going to be draining the gearbox fluid and seeing how bad it is. Well, I think we know how bad it is. It's quite brown, very tired. It's done 50,000 miles and it definitely hasn't been changed. So uh, let's take a look under now. First thing to do is just pull the dipstick just slightly out so there's a bit of gravity in. As we crawl under, I have all washed all this down and it's looking a little bit more... Um, well, I can see everything for what it is. Um, surf, a bit rusty in places, but overall quite decent. Um, I didn't realise you've actually got a sump plug in there. That looks like it's a hex, a uh, hex 6, 7 or 8 possibly. Um, I forget that this gearbox um, needs an oil change every 37,000 miles as specified. It is not one of these fluid for life gearboxes, so hence why they've put that in. I may just take all of these bolts out anyway because I need to drop the pan and have a look at the filter anyway but we'll take the drain plug out that'll make things easier when taking the pan off. I can tell you now penetrating fluid and a bit of pressure that H8 bolt that is not coming out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the hard way take all the bolts off ignore the drain plug I am not breaking anything on this I'm just going to do it the other way well I'll tell you something these bolts are strangely look at that it's just they've literally just come off I've not do, I've not done this before camera look I've never I've not touched any of these bolts and they're coming out easy so there's probably about 26 of these or something similar that's a bit tighter on that side and this one there we go you can hear my ratchet bending on give us some credit folks us youtubers holding the camera and watching what we're doing at the same time it's a nice one i'll come back when all these are loosened and it's starting to drain it's going to be messy Ooh, aye. you can see where it's all coming out now I don't know if there's a sump gasket on this, but um, if not, I'll just make my own gasket. This is going to be really messy, but I've got just the tool for the job. This, if you if you haven't got one of these, you need to get one. This is a Draper Stormforce one. This is a, a 3.8 um, electric ratchet, cordless ratchet, battery powered. Uh, I bought it really cheaply for about 35 quid with the battery. And this will whack all them loosened bolts off now quickly before my hands get all messed up i have to say looking at that fluid it isn't so bad it's dark but it actually looking very closely it is actually quite reddish uh that is good to see so i'll whack it open now Right, all the bolts are off and it's just held on with the seam so gonna get my uh pry bar tool i'm gonna need two hands for this so there we oh my god what a mess i couldn't get the pan off i went back in the house to get my chisel and guess what happened clump with a load of the sound of fluid dripping absolutely everywhere. Blimey neck. Every time I do a gearbox change, this happens. No matter how prepared you are for it. Oh well, that's off. Let's just let it drip out. Oh God. Just trying to get the excess out of this, this pan after I've just wiped up all my mess. It's very clean under there which is good to know i'm just going to let it drip so it has got a sump gasket which is stuck 
Well, that's ideal because I'd like it to remain stuck because uh, that's going to be reused. That's not part of that I don't think I can get hold of. Neither is the filter. Um, filters are very hard to get for these. And you can't use the mini ones because they have a completely different uh, mesh to them which causes all sorts of uh, running issues with the gearbox. Um, I think Rimmer Brothers have supplied them but they're on a back order until November. That's not quick enough for me. I mean this gearbox is going to be draining for some time. I'm, I'm not going to be getting around to this for ages. I haven't ordered any fluid so I'm just going to let it drip like I did with uh, the Ford automatic gearbox in my focus. Right, I am going to assume with this sump pan that I managed to chuck in the box, this is the magnet that surrounds the sump plug. Mmm, metally. There's not much of it though, um, it's just that, so I would say that's a win. We just need to clean this up as best as we can at some point. Very nice indeed, brilliant. Come on, it's gonna slip. Ah! Woo! Straight in there, brilliant. I've gotta get that filter out now. Oh well. Good. Just let that drain completely now. Okay, so we've got the, right in front of us, with the, where those springs are, in my, um, Right in front of us where we've got the big spring that be, I think that's a primary valve then there's a secondary valve spring right next to it, the smaller one. The stepper motor is there, that big motor thing and obviously the wiring from that harness goes down to there. And then you've got a little valve block but it is actually really really simple on these cars. There's really not much to these CVT gearboxes at all. I tell you what, it is actually really clean in there and I'm pleased about that. Now the fluid has actually come off, I can see how clean it actually is. That, that really does give me some uh, confidence that a, a, a change, not a flush, but a change um, will kick it back into life. Okay, another job I said I would do while I'm here is to release the stepper motor wine. I'm going to clean in there with contact cleaner and clean these pins. These wires look a bit um, hard, so you've got to be careful when twisting. You've got to twist this bit because, um, look what I did. The, the casing was a bit brittle, so just be very careful when twisting this off. You might need some um, like water pump pliers I used. These. Okay, hardly the most appropriate tool for the job as I've just certain you, but it's worked, so I'm going to clean that out with contact cleaner. And where's my bottle gun? Just there you go. That's all you need to do. Bingo, all done and tightened up. So at least I know the connections are clean, squeaky clean. Well, I don't know if you can see, I'll just put my camera there, right in front of you. It goes through here into there. You see that thing sticking out towards the um, the um, sort of selector pull. That is the start inhibitor switch. Now I've just pulled that boot there, just further back. I've pulled that boot off, and I've squirted over the contact cleaner in. They can fill it with water. I mean, the idea is that you fill it with Vaseline, but um, that has also caused problems for a lot of uh, people that I've seen. So um, I've cleaned that one up as well. So that's the view we need to see. Push down this clip and then push this way, okay, to get this off. This is uh, the sensor, come on camera. It's uh, held in against the body. I can't seem to shift it at the moment, but I'm just gonna get a straw and squirt into this sensor and then clean this up as well. Okay, so we have quite a bit of fluid here, which I'm gonna dispose of soon in the milk bottles well not dispose of but take it down to the soaking center along with loads of other engine oil that i've got stacked up now this is the filter this is probably the original one 
Um, there is something on the back side I will show you. And there is the magnet. Now it is a bit on the furry side. Mm. That's 50,000 miles of metal. I just hope that that is not considered a lot. I don't know whether that is considered a lot. Suffice to say, that is... Put it this way, I've done a, a gearbox change on my Focus that uh, the gearbox had done about 86,000 miles and there was roughly the same amount. So whether this has had a harder life, well these gearboxes are just not as, as robust, which a lot of people tend to say. But a fluid change is much needed and this is going to be really well cleaned up. In mess, honestly the driveway is so nice and shiny it's untrue after so much scrubbing and um drips i mean look at the oil the oil is still dripping that's why i've left the drain plug out as much as that as i can get out the better so we're going to leave that there to drip for quite some time i'm not putting that pan back on for at least a week or two um, i've ordered a numerous amount of parts but we're just going to do things parallel to each other the next job is to take the front driver's arch off get the wheel off for a start because i don't know how tight the locking nuts are going to be uh with the um they've got original locking nut keys the original mcgall ones uh, and then we'll have a look at see if we can get the power steering belt off the tensioner slackened and if we have to remove them the alternator belt is still on the car because i can't actually remove it so tomorrow we'll look at that um, in preparation for a timing belt change uh, as everything else seems to be going on smoothly. See you soon guys. Bye from Dirty Fingers.